you know, I'm going to tell you the truth, what happened. In the middle of the night, about the fourth night, I noticed the light was on downstairs. So I got up and I went down to see what was going on. He was baking up a big bunch of potatoes. He was hungry in the middle of the night and he decided he was going to pig out on potatoes and that slowed the cleanse down. And I say that because I got 40 feet out. 40 feet out in six days. Now, I was how blown away. How long is our small intestine? How, the average the, person the is. The small about intestine is 22 feet long on an average, and the colon itself is only 6 feet. The large, large intestine is the colon, 6 feet long. The small intestine is the is 22 feet long. But now, you why? have 40, <laughs> so do the math. Where's the extra Okay, what feet? happens is that it's in there in layers. And I explain why it's formed in layers and why this it comes out like that. So, I mean, you can get more than the length of your intestine out. Is that why you call it plaque? Because I used to tell our students who said, what do you mean by plaque? And I didn't know. So, I in Thailand, I said, I believe it's, it's similar to plumbing. A plumber <laughs> comes because so many years of buildup of, of layer upon like the Grand Canyon layer upon layer of sedimentation uh -huh. and so those layers have to come off in reverse right is that the exactly idea? right and as they come off the consciousness or let's say the traumas that people were experiencing during those periods the memory is in the mucoid plaque that fascinated me when that first happened I thought it was just me I thought, you know, I get on a cleanse and all these memories would come up and, and uh, sometimes it was anger, sometimes it was just plain trauma and, and despair and, and, and illness and all that. And, and then pretty soon I found out that almost everybody was experiencing that. And so, and here's the other thing that really hit me is that a person would get on the cleanse and let's say they have allergies. And, uh, and all of a sudden, uh, sometime during the cleanse, this emotion would come up and I mean and it just overpowered them you know and they had forgotten about it they didn't even know it was there it was something that maybe even in their childhood and boom a few minutes later uh, they would let loose a big piece of mucoid plaque and boom the emotion was gone and so was the allergy or whatever the problem was and that's how I started hooking up emotions with trauma I mean, I mean, emotional trauma uh, with um, illnesses. I mean, with certain problems, health problems, were associated with uh, the way we, you know, with our emotions that got stored in the subconscious. And that's a whole nother story to talk about. But um, you know, that's I, how that happened. I worked with hundreds of people at the health spa uh -huh. in Thailand, and it was usually only perhaps a dozen, perhaps two dozen at a time. However, we always had boxes of Kleenex out. And most of these people were actually looking quite healthy. There were quite a few movie stars that would come every year to cleanse because they knew that it was part of the fountain of perpetual youth. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting is everyone there was an emotional basket case. <laughs> and we were like manic depressives. But you knew going in that this is probably going to happen. Right. So there was a lot of compassion. So when this does happen, just it shouldn't be surprising that you might even feel extremely depressed, fearful, angry. What for me, because I had had so many illnesses during my first 30 years, it was all about illness. So it was emotion, illness, emotion, illness, one after another. And and even things like I had given up washing my hair when I was about 30 years old in New Zealand. I had heard that a lot of people in New Zealand know that it's unnatural to wash your hair with shampoo. And so I was told by a, another kayaking guide that if you just don't shampoo your hair for about six weeks, that all the bubbles and the past essences, the aromas of the various shampoos you've used over a lifetime will start coming up. And hmm. your hair will get really greasy, the scalp might get a little itchy. But then by the end of six weeks, it will be over. Well, in my case, because I was on raw food, I think it lasted only two weeks, and it really wasn't that bad. But even that cleansing uh, that I had already done came back up again. And mm. I could smell a bouquet of various shampoos. Oh, yes. For, for maybe half an hour. Right. They just came up. So, right. And so if you do have, an emo like in my case, pneumonia, I felt my throat constricting. I felt oh, the panic, that feeling that I had, I'm going to die. But then it passed very quickly. Right. 
Yeah, that's a good part. Is it doesn't usually last uh, on, the, on average maybe a couple hours, and then uh, but not very often does it last more than a day. Well, you have helped how many thousands of people do you think cleanse and actually actualize? Like, how many people have not gone to the hospital or gone to the to the graveyard early because of this? About yes. how many people do you think have taken your cleanse so far? Oh, I don't know. It's in the hundreds of thousands. And, uh, and once I wrote the book, and, and, and it was amazing, all these people were doing the cleanse. I mean, all around the world. You know, I mean, I'm, a man came to Mount Shasta, and he and uh, he wanted to buy the cleanse, and uh, and and I said, well, would you like the book too? And he said, no, I already have the book. I said, well, you know, this was in the early days. I hadn't even sold 500 books yet. I said, where'd you get the book? He said, I got it in India. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> And, uh, but it went around the world like that, and, but it was kind of to a select few. You know, it didn't hit mainstream. But it was the people who were really interested in health, trying to improve their life in every way. They were attracted to this like a magnet. And I remember one time I went to the post office in Mount Shasta, and there were two ladies sitting outside, uh, inside the, the post office. I went to my post office box, and these people were watching me. And soon as they saw that, you know, I had P.O. Box 901, and they uh, jumped up and they came over to me and they said, are you Rich Anderson? <laughs> and I said, yes. And one of the ladies was a PhD. She was determined to meet me. And uh, so we had people from all walks of life doing this cleanse, and, and it sparked the cleansing movement. I'm quite sure, I mean, a lot of people have said that, you know, because all these companies saw what the uh, cleanse can do for them, they had to have one. And pretty, I mean, when we started, there was only four companies out there in the market, and hardly anybody knew about them. And now there's over 400. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I believe, I mean, a lot of people believe that, you know, we, you know, with the book and with the power of this cleanse, that's what stimulated the colon cleansing movement. And uh, I, I would agree. Yeah, that's a lot the of people word. do. Now, how often would you recommend doing the cleanse? And by the way, just for the record, I'm not on staff with Richard. <laughs> I just experienced the miracle of this myself. Uh -huh. And working at the spa, I saw hundreds of others whose eye colors changed, yes. whose energy, who, who, who came back from the dead, many oh, yeah. of them, mm -hmm. right on the edge. And so mm -hmm. I just would like to get the word out. I appreciate that, yeah. Uh, but how, now, I haven't done the cleanse, I have to confess, for almost 10 years, and I'm feeling very ready to do it again. Uh -huh. How often do you recommend people to do this cleanse? It totally depends upon what a person is trying to accomplish. See, the whole cleanse now, even in the last three years, we're taking it to a whole other level. And in, another, in less than another year, it's going to really be something that's never been before. And uh, and one of the main factors that I'm focusing on, on right now, and that what I want to really help people understand, is how our emotions are affecting our physiology. We know from a medical point of view that the, um, the intestines and what we put in our food and such, uh, our emotions are all connected to it and that our emotions are controlling our chemistry through the hypothalamus and so what takes our, place. So emotions are actually making us sick, in a sense. They're yeah, if they're negative crazy. emotions, they're making you sick. If they're positive emotions like joy and love, they're healing you. And, and I want people to understand this. I, when I started, many, I mean, well, you mentioned that you were a pretty sick person when you were, well, I was too. I had rheumatic fever and I had heart problems and. Uh, valve problems and all sorts of problems. I had a list of health problems that were pretty bad. They said that doctors said I would not live past 40. And um, well, it certainly proved them wrong on that one, but it's only because I cleansed my body and I changed my diet and I lived pretty healthfully. And also, our emotions. I noticed when I was 12 years old, I started meditating and I noticed that I had a lot of anger. Oh, yeah. And I was very slow to forgive, yeah, so I really too. worked yeah. on on r making my forgiveness more thorough and also rapid because I thought I can't afford the lapse time of what goes on emotionally, how it's affecting my body right. and my mind, 
And uh, so it really was a, a trigger at a very young age to look at emotions. And that's encur what encouraged me to write my two books. When I was 16, my friend died um, suicide. She was a poet. And I was starting to write poetry. And I committed that day to never writing a negative poem. Hmm. So that's why my book is Uncivilized Ecstasies. Hmm. And then the Bliss Conscious Communication book is How to Be a Blissologist. Because I feel that emotions do, I concur, cause these illnesses. And so if we, can, how can we be in a state of perpetual joy, contentment? <laughs> People ask me, how do you do that, Happy Oasis? And so I wrote a book about the techniques that I use that had become so ingrained in me that I wasn't even consciously aware that I was doing them. Mm -hmm. So this is a how-to book that I hadn't ever thought about it, but it would actually go very well with your cleanse because it's the emotional cleansing and it is based on the bliss of cleanse, uh, the discipline of bliss, which is a very strong discipline because uh, in the world today, there's all kinds of alternative options. So I just wish to throw that out because it, it goes right along with healthy living. I believe it's the core that's the ultimate disease preventative. I, I do believe that all emotions have an effect upon our physiology. I believe that every single disease out there is associated with the disease, I mean, it's associated with emotion. And that, uh, and I have no doubt about it. It took me many years to be able to come to that point where I say, I am certain of it. And now that we have PhDs who are also certain of it. And even Candace Kurt said the same thing. She wrote the book, Molecules of Emotion. And an amazing book, such an amazing book that we carry.